Well, we did have a little bit of a tweet put out by Nate Diaz. Shocking, because Nate doesn't seem to tweet that much. <laughs> and Nate wants something out, man. He gets on that sucker, and he goes, and he did this whole thing about, you know, the contracts of the UFC and that, you know, what he wanted to fight at, I guess it's 306, will be the sphere. It would be a perfect uh, time for that trilogy fight with Conor McGregor. But Dana kind of put a big old kibosh on that situation. And Connor came out saying that he wanted that. Wanted to, wanted to get into uh, the sphere with Nate Diaz. Cold water. Well, we talked to, uh, on the show earlier this week, and we said exactly what most fighters are thinking. They just don't say because they don't want to say it to Dana White and piss him off. Is that... You need something that motivates you. And the guys that motivate him right now are Michael Chandler and Nate Diaz. He wants that trilogy fight. And he wants it at the sphere. Now, whether that happens or not, who knows? I mean, Nate Diaz Diaz being Hispanic, I mean, it kind of makes sense, <laughs> you know, um, to, to lead with that. But that being said, more Nate was on the on the on the tweet talking about he was in the same position that Connor's in right now over contract negotiations. He's got two more fights left on his contract. Connor does. Connor. Nate Diaz went through this and his last two fights. They try to drag him out as long as they possibly could. Could you not remember when Nate was, he was tweeting mm -hmm. and saying, Hey, give me an opponent. You know, I just want an opponent. I'm sitting here. And he kept on putting time and time and time, all these things about, I want an opponent. Couldn't get one. And they finally gave him Hamza, and then Hamza missed weight by 10 pounds. Correct? And yep. then that moved that whole thing around. He ended up fighting Tony thing. Ferguson, which I thought was a good matchup anyways. It was a better style matchup for Nate. But look, Nate came out and said in his tweet, this was me for years before Connor even got here. They want you to die before you get out of these contracts. It's up to you to make something pop. No one going to help you but you. Free Connor. It's, a, it's at Patty's day in this bitch. I was trying to figure out what the hell he was trying to say at the end. Look, Same party yeah, I know, yeah. Uh, but it's it, fighters are going to have their, their, their thoughts on how these contracts are, are done. My personal experience is I went through the same thing before I left and went to Bellator. They drug me out for almost a year. There was a conversation about, are you going to resign? Are you going to resign? Are you going to resign? They saw the writing on the wall that Coker was over at Bellator. I think they knew that I was probably looking to leave. They knew that I wanted to fight on my contract. They were trying to re-sign me right after the, the Benson fight. And they said, hey, we want to get you re-signed. I was like, oh, let's, let me get a win. And then, you know, and then I lost. And that kind of put a fucking damper on it too because then they came back, you know, with the same numbers, no increase. And I was like, all right, well, at least it wasn't going down. But it's a process, man. They continue yeah, to come is. after you after two, three fights. If you have two or three fights left on your contract, they want to try to keep get you signed so you have you can't leave and go somewhere else. And it's not even so much about that they don't want you to leave to go somewhere else. Is that they just don't want you utilizing what they've built up around you, especially sure. early. So like I was coming off the Benson fight, you know, uh, Connor hasn't fought for a while, but Connor is just a different level of anything. And so they don't want him to run along and go and do a Manny Pacquiao fight in, you know, in, in Riyadh or in Saudi Arabia. They don't want him to go and take another fight against Nate somewhere else, maybe in Saudi Arabia. They don't want all that to happen. They want to try to make this thing work inside the, the UFC um, contracts. That's a tough one, man. It, it really is a tough one, John. It is a tough one, but it's it comes down to the fact that I understand why they don't want those fights to take place without them being the promoter of it. And they, you can sit there and say, did the UFC make Nate Diaz? Yeah, partially. But Nate Diaz made Nate Diaz. Now, I, I, I have to give some, you know, some credit to the UFC for, you know, being the platform that he did it on, but you gotta, it's the fighter himself that makes that situation. And I've heard too many times people say, well, oh, you know, you, you're only, you know, you're known because of the UFC or, you know, any, okay, true. I'm not going to say it's not true, but they didn't teach me what to do. Mm -hmm. They didn't put in the time. They didn't do all the things that, you know, it took to get there. 
that's what each individual fighter is doing. And it comes a point where you look and you go, yeah, you could lose that one. Mm -hmm. How long do you stretch somebody out? How long, how long before, no matter what has happened in the past where it was all good, you know, we're buddy buddies to where all of a sudden, I don't care what's going to happen. You're no longer going to be buddies. People get pissed off. People get upset by being held back. People get upset Mm -hmm. by being told, well, we'll come up with a date and then nothing shows up. It comes to a point where you're going to lose. Let them go. I I always look at, always look at it. Like if someone doesn't want to be there, then don't be there. I don't want you. I mean, you got to take into consideration Nick and Nate Diaz, both, they built their own brand. I mean, you got to think about how, how, how much Nick has contributed, not just the sport, but Joe Rogan podcast all day, all night. He uses that on his intro still. Yeah. That was done in the center of the cage. (laughs) <laughs> I, don't, I don't think people can wrap their head around that that's he uses that voice to intro his his podcast every day every day sometimes he that's does it. he films two three times a day it's for sure twice that's a it. day and that's joe rogan podcast all day all night that's nick diaz yeah. nate diaz i ain't scared I'm like, like don't be scared homie that's one the other one yeah. is i'm not surprised motherfucker like yeah, these are all sayings it. that people run around saying yeah. Kids run around saying them. You see, I see kids on our P- actually grown adults now. I see them on, <laughs> on social media yeah. using that, talking trash to people. Oh, yeah. I ain't surprised, yeah. motherfucker. Yeah, they, <laughs> and it's the way he did it. Exactly. That's what made it what it is. Yeah. And so it's and the attitude behind it. Those are things they built themselves. Sure, they did it on the UFC platform that had all these yes. uh, views. Okay. If it was as easy to do what they what, what the Diaz brothers did, everyone would do it. But it's not. Like, who the fuck is that guy? Yeah. Do you know, like Connor? That, yeah, that's Connor. Like, those are things that if it was easy for people to do, to come up with those sayings and get people attached to that, everyone See, but that's would the, do and it. And that's the whole point. It's like if I sit here and I go, I'm gonna smash your boy. <laughs> You know exactly who I'm talking about. No one told him to say it. It wasn't the company that came up with that, but they did give him the platform to put it out there that now it's, it's synonymous. Bring with me him. your chicken. <laughs> right? Yeah. You know? Bring me your chicken boy. Yeah, right? It's, <laughs> so, look, the platform was given to them by the UFC. The UFC has built that platform up to the next level for all of these athletes to, to yeah. perform. And to not just showcase their fighting, but to showcase their personality, showcase who they are. And that's what makes them stars. Getting, get, that's why when, I, when I've had this conversation so many times with Chell, Chell's like, when you get that microphone, don't say, yeah, whatever Dana wants, whatever Sean Shelby and Hunter and the, you know, what they want. No, say what you want. Say, call out whoever, talk shit, do whatever it is, however you want to do it. Give your what's that thing called, Dave? When they say, um, uh, WWE, like give your, give your whatever cut, they can promo? cut a cut a promo, cut a promo, yeah, yeah, like go out there and cut a promo. That's probably why I was never very good at this. I didn't even know what it was called. Go out there, <laughs> cut a go out there and cut a promo, man. Yeah. I mean, I remember, I remember when I got the mic the first time in the UFC, it was after I think the. After the Gerald Streetman fight. And I was basically like, oh, yeah, being super nice. And, then, and I go back. And I'm like, God, what were you doing? So stupid. Dumb. Like, just call out who's next. And the only thing that got me the Hermes Franca fight was after he had beat my, my teammate, Rich Crunkleton, is I pointed at Dana White. And I said, I want him next inside the cage because I was there with Rich cornering him. And I said, Dana, I want him next. And that's the only reason why I got that fight. Dana thrived off of that. And it wasn't until that moment that I realized that, that he was the one that loved the fighters. Like when they said that and they said this and it didn't work for me when I was calling out when I wanted the Cerrone fight, but you know, it worked, it worked that day for the Hermes Franca fight in this situation. I think these, I, I would love to see Nate and Connor do the third fight. People are like, Oh, I don't care. Bullshit. If that shit was on, you guys would watch it. Tell me I'm wrong, John. I'd watch that no. shit. Yeah, well, you got to go with both. 
both of their previous fights. You know, the first round of the Nate, you know, and uh, Connor fight of the first one, look, Connor was putting it on him, you know, and it was a matter of, you know, Nate being as tough as he was and just hanging in there and his cardio and Connor getting tired and Connor weighing a little bit more and all these things. And then Connor wants to do it at the same weight to prove something. And the second fight, look, it was a war. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, there's the ugly person standing behind both of those guys that, you know, the, both of them took a lot of damage in the fight. And there was, there was moments of, is a guy going to, is, is he breaking for both? And neither one did. Mm-hmm. And you look, you know, I, I remember, I remember people, you know, you, you get, you're always going to get, you know, whoever, you know, saying, you know, you should have done this. I should have taken points from Connor for timidity for running. I was like, <laughs> running, gaining space and time. Okay, whatever you think, you know. But you know, people are crazy about uh, coming up with stuff. But those guys bring the best mm-hmm. out of each other. And when you have those situations, you, you're always going to have people wanting to see it. Well, Coker had told me he's like, "Look, if I could have you and Gilbert fight on every show, I would." Sure. And there's certain fighters, like I said, like guys that motivate right. you to be the best are the ones that get the, they bring the best out of you. And Gilbert was my guy. He was my nemesis, but a good friend of mine as well. Over the years, we were battled back and forth. We're friends, not friends. We're friends right now. I think we're <laughs> friends again. So, uh, but no, like it just certain guys bring that out of, you know, I think the two of them have so much respect for each other. They've spent plenty of time in the cage together. Nate coming to Connor's defense in this tweet. But then Connor also came out just yesterday or today talking about how he's locked down. That it's pretty much all things are, all systems are go. And I'm looking forward to this fight happening. Uh, it will be Michael Chandler sh- sometime in the summer. I think it'll probably be sometime around um, International Fight Week is probably when it'll happen. I think that's that's the game plan right there. And it makes sense. You have Michael Chandler, June 29th. Um, against uh against conor mcgregor and then you look at him fighting maybe in the sphere against nate diaz i hope the ufc bites the bullet and just says okay look let's bring nate back for the fight i don't know if they will i think going off they've been trying to prove that if you go off and lose in a boxing match without our consent or without us being involved there's no room for you back here but we're gonna find out we're gonna find that out though to be honest when nate and when Masvidal fight June 1st, because Masvidal is still under contract with the UFC. Yeah. That's why their deal is that they have to fight on UFC fight pass. Yes. And so Nate is not under contract, but he's still going to be able to show the fight on UFC fight pass. Masvidal is out on loan. He can fight other places as long as whatever his fights are, are on UFC fight pass. So we're going to find out. I mean, if Nate ends up winning that fight, do they bring Masvidal back or do they just release him? And if that's the case, if Nate does win, does that mean now we bring you back because you're coming off of a win versus your loss to Jake Paul? <laughs> I think a lot has to happen in that fight to see who, you know, if they end up bringing Nate back to fight Conor McGregor at the Sphere. 